Welcome to Elect Online. Now let's apply what we've learned in the last few videos on this particular problem. Here we're told that we have a boat with an engine that can, has variable horsepower and when the engine applies a horsepower of 10 horsepower the boat will move at 5 meters per second. Keeping in mind that there is a resistance force from the water, the boat moving through the water, that is equal to some constant, let's call it B, times V, times the velocity. In other words, if we double the velocity, we have double the resistance on the, wa of the water on the boat. If we triple the velocity, it is triple the resistance of the water on the boat. So now we're asking the question, what is the power requirement of the motor if the velocity now goes to double the velocity from before instead of 5 meters per second, 10 meters per second? How much horsepower will that require? So we're going to start again with our original energy equation where the force put into the system uh, plus the original potential energy plus the original kinetic energy is equal to the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy Oop, that should be kinetic energy final uh, plus any energy lost to, to overcoming friction. So in this case, that would be energy lost by moving through the water. But instead of writing like that, we can write where the work put into the system is equal to the change in the potential energy. In other words, it's the final potential energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And you know what? I'm going to write that down so it makes it more clear what we're doing here. So we're going to move this over here. So that's potential energy final minus potential energy initial plus the kinetic energy final plus the kinetic energy initial and uh, oh, not plus but minus minus kinetic energy initial plus the energy lost to overcome friction and so we can write this as the change in potential and change in kinetic energy so work is equal to the change in potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy plus the energy lost all right, so what should we do now? We're going to divide both sides by t, by time. So divide this by time. Now what this equation is going to become is as follows. First of all, work divided by time, we know that is equal to power. That's the power provided by the motor. But the power is provided by the motor. We're moving at a constant 5 meters per second and we're not gaining any height, which means there's no change in potential energy, there's no change in kinetic energy, so these are both zero, zero plus zero, and then energy loss divided by time, well, that can be expressed in terms of force times distance over time, because energy is the same as work, is the same as force times distance, and distance divided by time Oop, and I don't think I want an equal sign, I want a plus sign there. And then finally, distance divided by time, that's equal to velocity. So we can say that power is equal to the force times velocity. Now notice the force, in this case, is the force divided by the wind, or the water, I should say, not the wind. And so this is going to be equal to B times V times V, or B times V squared. So the power of the boat is equal to B times V squared. So power is equal to B times V squared, and we can say that the initial power is equal to B times the initial velocity squared. So what happens now when we double the velocity? So now the new power required when the velocity is now double the original velocity, so V final is equal to 2 times V initial. All right, let's plug that in here and see what happens. So power final is equal to B times v final squared, so it would be v final squared, and v final of course is twice v initial. So power final equals b times 2v initial squared. So this is equal to power final is equal to b times 4v initial squared, or power final is equal to 4 times bv initial squared. Now notice that this is equal to the initial power. So that means the final power is equal to 4 times the initial power. And since the initial power was equal to 10 horsepower, power final is equal to 4 times 10 horsepower, which means it's equal to 40 
horsepower. So here we have a case where the motor of the boat is pushing against the resistive forces of the water. Notice that the force is not constant but increases. It's a function of the velocity. When you double the velocity, you get double the force. So when you double the velocity, not only do you have higher velocity, you also have higher resistive force. And therefore, the power required is not twice the original horsepower, but four times the original horsepower. And that is how we know.